We start with a live look outside where the wildfire smoke is blanketing the inland northwest tonight. That smoke rolled in early this morning. It's impacting visibility and it forced many people to stay indoors today. And taking a live look at the current air quality around the region, the map behind me right here. Here's Spokane. We're in this area shaded in red. That means unhealthy air. But take a look right here. Sandpoint, Coeur d'Alene, Post Falls, even down to Pullman. That's purple. That signifies very unhealthy air quality. At times, we in Spokane were also in the very unhealthy range. Things have improved a bit, but the smoke will be sticking around for at least a day or two more. Good evening and thank you for joining us for Crempton News at 11 tonight. I'm Mark Hanrahan and it's not just the smoke that we're dealing with, but also the hot temperatures as well. And it's about to get even hotter. Meteorologist Michelle Boss joining us from the Outdoor Weather Center tonight. Michelle, once again, we are tracking potential record heat tomorrow. Yeah, we kind of had a double whammy today. Of course, the smoke moved in, so we had to deal with that. And temperatures that the smoke held us back a couple of degrees. It was still plenty hot. Taking a look at high temperatures today. Spokane topped out at 97 degrees, 96 in Deer Park, still in the 90s in Sandpoint. But look at all the triple digits around the inland northwest. 101 in Walla Walla, 102 in Moses Lake, and just under 100 in OMAC. Currently, temperatures obviously so you're a little bit more comfortable here at 11 o'clock at night. 74 in Spokane it has cooled down into the 60s in Deer Park and Coeur d'Alene. Quite a bit cooler in Sandpoint 61, still in the 70s out across the central portion of the state and in the lower 80s in Lewis. And of course, that excessive heat warning will continue through 8 o'clock on Saturday evening. Uh, most of the entire state of Washington under that excessive heat warning, including Coeur d'Alene and North Idaho down into the Idaho Palouse and the Grangeville area under a heat advisory. Hardly a cloud in the sky, but all that uh, cloudiness you saw in the sky was actually just haze and infrared satellite doesn't pick that up very well. So not clouds, just a lot of smoke. Of course, our air quality suffered because of that. We are currently in the unhealthy air quality category at 167 for the AQI. And I don't see any major improvements uh, until maybe Sunday and then definitely into Monday. So for the next three days, hazy and hot, 99 tomorrow, hot and hazy, 100 on Saturday and 95 on Sunday. All right, Michelle, thank you very much. And the smoke in the region are due, of course, to all the wildfires burning in the region. So let's jump right into that. The Walker Creek, Spur and Chickadee fires burning in Okanagan County are prompting level three evacuations. The three fires burning near Wakanda have burned more than 6,000 acres in total. All are 0% contained except for the Walker Creek fire, which is now 10% contained tonight. The Schneider Springs fire burning 20 miles northwest of Natchez also prompting new level three evacuations for nearby residents. It has burned now more than 7,000 acres and it's putting out a massive plume of smoke into the area. So far, crews have that fire 10% contained as well. Of course, we are just scratching the surface of all the wildfires burning across the region tonight. So for the latest on all the fires, just text the word fire to 509-448-2000 and we'll send you the latest updates. New since our six o'clock hour tonight, the Food and Drug Administration has okayed a third dose of the Pfizer or Moderna vaccine for immunocompromised Americans. The late night announcement applies to several million Americans who are vulnerable because of organ transplants, certain cancers or other disorders. The FDA's decision only applies to this high risk group, which is estimated to be about 3% of the U.S. adult population. The FDA, FDA rather made no mention in their announcement of the patients who received the single dose Johnson and Johnson vaccine, so we'll keep you posted as soon as we learn more. Washington Superintendent of Public Instruction wants a vaccine mandate for public school employees. Superintendent Chris Rakedahl publicly asked Governor Inslee today to mandate COVID-19 vaccinations for public school employees. Graham 2's Joshua Robinson in the studio tonight. Joshua, this is part of a trend that we're seeing locally as well as across the nation. Yeah, Mark, earlier this week we told you about Governor Inslee's mandate that all state and health care employees will be required to get a vaccine, but it did not include K through 12 employees. But the precedent has already been set this week as California Governor Gavin Newsom announced yesterday that educators in California will be required to get a vaccine or submit to weekly testing. They're the first state to approve such a requirement. Precious resource, healthy and safe, our children. And we think this is a sustainable way to keeping our schools open. So Washington State would not be alone if the mandate does happen. And if it does, K through 12 teachers would join a list of people required to get a vaccine that already includes any employees working for state agencies, state contractors and health care workers. Of course, that category includes nursing homes, adult family homes, assisted living and residential treatment facilities. Now, nationally, one of the largest teachers unions has already shown support of the idea of requiring educators to get fully vaccinated or to undergo that regular testing. Take a look. The 
National Education Association released this statement today saying, quote, as we enter a new school year amidst a rapidly spreading Delta variant and lagging public vaccination rates, it is clear that the vaccination of those eligible is one of the most effective ways to keep schools safe and they must be coupled with another proven mitigation strategies. They also say that nearly 90% of their union members have reported to be fully vaccinated. And there are already a handful of businesses we have seen in Spokane requiring proof of vaccination. The owners of Nito Burrito and Baby Bar in downtown Spokane are requiring their customers to provide proof of vaccination if they come in after 5 p.m. By the way, Nito has masks required to enter as well. Nine Bar and Bistro also requiring vaccination and masks for their customers who would like to come in and dance. But right now, the city of Spokane itself not considering a vaccine mandate for city employees. And at the state level, Governor Inslee's office has said that they don't expect any kind of mandate to be announced this week, but that they are looking at policies to help increase vaccination rates in Washington. Mark. Joshua, thank you very much. A lot happened in the vaccine news today, so here are three things to know, starting with Idaho Governor Brad Little strongly encouraging Idahoans to get their COVID vaccine to ensure a smooth transition back to school. We can give our kids the best chance at a normal school year if Idahoans choose to receive the vaccine. The Panhandle Health District says there are currently 31 patients in critical care at Kootenai Health. In the five northern counties the Health District serves, just 38% are fully vaccinated. Interim Spokane County Health Officer Dr. Frank Velasquez, along with other Washington Health Officers, is encouraging everyone to mask up. In a joint statement today, all 35 health officers say the directive comes after an increase in cases, hospitalizations, and of course the new Delta variant. They say everyone should mask up indoors when the vaccination status of those around you is unknown. WSU removing most of their vaccine exemptions once the FDA fully approves the coronavirus vaccines. Students will no longer be allowed to be unvaccinated for personal or philosophical reasons. Once the exemptions are removed, students will have 45 days to start the vaccine process. New tonight, the U.S. Attorney's Office says a recent COVID outbreak in Tacoma is tied to ICE transferring immigrants to Western Washington. About 150 people have tested positive since June. The Northwest Detention Center in Tacoma is one of the largest immigration detention centers in the nation. Many immigrants are transferred from places like Texas. Now activists are pushing for answers because even people who were inside the detention center were not aware of the outbreak. Do you know about the COVID outbreak that's happening in the facility? No. No, nobody knows. Nobody tells us anything. They don't tell us anything. You don't know anything about your case, your hearing date. We don't know anything until the day it actually happens. The U.S. Attorney's Office says the surge in cases came as the federal government transferred nearly 1,100 immigrants to that facility. The government says in legal documents its protocols, quote, may not follow the ideal scenario outlined by the CDC, but they say it does meet the federal health agency's recommendations. A small plane crash started a grass fire, grass fire rather, at the Pierce County Airport. Take a look. The former Navy training plane lost its propeller. The pilot was the only person on board at the time. He was not seriously hurt. Firefighters were able to get control of that fire before it got out of control. Washington just took a big step to tackle the staggering number of missing and murdered indigenous women. State Attorney General Bob Ferguson announced the formation of the Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women and People Task Force today. The 21 person team will examine the causes behind the high rates of disappearances and murders of indigenous women and people, and they'll produce two reports to the governor and to the legislature. Homicide is the leading cause of death for indigenous women and girls, and out of all the ethnic groups in the U.S., indigenous women go missing and are murdered at a much higher rate. The scope of the problem is actually uncertain because getting an accurate count of the number of women impacted is difficult, experts say. Well, the first live Asian giant hornet of the year has been found in Washington, the state's Department of Agriculture. They sent out this picture today. Take a look. It was spotted attacking a paper wasp nest two miles east of where the first Asian giant hornet was eradicated last year. The WSDA is now asking anyone with paper wasp nests to keep an eye out for Asian giant hornets and report their sightings. These prices have put the squeeze on too many families and stripped them of their dignity. One month after President Joe Biden took executive action aimed at lowering drug prices, he's now calling on Congress to do more. Americans currently pay more than double for prescription drugs than any other developed country in the entire world. 
President Biden is asking Congress to allow Medicare to negotiate drug prices, which they currently cannot do by law. The administration would also like a cap on the amount that Medicare beneficiaries have to pay out of pocket for drugs each year and says that drug companies that raise their price faster than inflation should have to pay a penalty. If Medicare prices are available to private insurance companies, then it would reduce the cost of employer based health insurance coverage. Senate Democrats have included provisions to expand Medicare and lower drug prices in their $3.5 trillion budget framework. That measure has now moved to the House for consideration after the Senate approved it in a party line vote yesterday. Still ahead tonight, local health leaders insist there is not a shortage of COVID tests in the area. Yet many of you have reached out to Cram 2 to tell us it's almost impossible to find an appointment. We'll tell you what we found out after the break.